Good evening, and thanks for watching another Budget Model Railway video. Today we're going to do a slightly longer one on how to make hills, which seems a very popular subject. We made this hill for almost no cost. Even if we'd had to buy the materials, it would only have cost us about £2.50. We already had them, so it's a very cheap way. It's very lightweight, and we're using a different method of building the hill away from the baseboard and then bringing it and sticking it on. So this is the finished image, and now we'll show you how we made it. So welcome to another one of our videos. This is going to be a composite one about how I make hills. So uh, we're going to film it in two or three different places and then edit it together. So this is just to show you the base construction of a hill. Um, now obviously what I'm doing a bit differently is I'm not building this in situ on the layout. Um, so the same as I built my little town scene, almost the same as I'm doing with static grass. This is something again I saw in Railway Modeler a few years ago. Rather than making a lot of mess, and I'll show you in a minute where I can't get to my layout, but this is just to show you the very simple construction. That's all secondhand cardboard, and I've got a little flat point there, and I'm going to have my pillbox on that. Right, and now we come to the next stage. You've seen how we've built the basic cardboard structure. We did use this, which is the cheaper Poundland PVA. It does take a day or so to dry. Um, you can obviously buy better PVAs that will glue dry very very quickly they will be five or six times the price so it's up to you we're budget so we do it cheap so the next stage here is not really very complicated we take screwed up newspaper and we shove it in to where we want it to go and then we pour a little bit of glue to hold it in place now we used to use watered down glue but this cheap PVA is pre-watered down anyway, so I don't really need to. Uh, I'm just going to do a couple of bits and show you doing it, and then what we'll do is we'll time lapse till we're ready to do the next stage. Now, one of the reasons we use cheap PVA is because even a job like this might use half a bottle. It's just not worth using rocket glue at £10 a tub for this kind of job. It really isn't. It's nice and messy. When Douglas, my son, was a little bit younger, he really used to enjoy doing this. So I'm just going to do a few more bits and then we'll time lapse it. One of the reasons of doing all these different supports is to hold the scrunched up newspaper in place. So what we'll do now, we'll carry on with the time lapse and then, as if by magic, in a few seconds you'll see it finished, which will probably take me about half an hour. So what we're going to do now, as you can see here, we've got our hill roughly made, lots of scrunched up newspaper, might come out a bit steeper than I want. So the next stage is to start sticking the paper mache strips on. To do that, this is why you use a back seam. The easiest thing to do is to put a few bits there and then this will come over like this and what we're going to do is tuck that underneath quite so long, a little bit of glue. Like that. And then we're going to use this, which is watered down PVA. And like that, what we call ballast glue, because we used to use it traditionally for sticking ballast down. And what we're going to start doing is putting the hills on the actual cover to the hill, like that. It's quite quite messy, but it will work. If you Actually, that first bit I did is probably a bit big. It works better with short strips. And then we'll just show you how we're doing a few of these bits. And then in a moment, we'll go into time lapse so that you can see, but you can see how this piece now is sticking to that piece 
and we can already start pulling it in a bit tighter. The real thing is don't let them get too bulgy and steep because then you'll have problems with your scatter. Okay, and now we're going to go into time lapse. So just something we've just, this is how we always work. We tend to discover things as we go along. It's coming out too much at the front because I don't have the clearance on my trap. So what we're actually going to do is another little thing, which is use masking tape so that we can pull it tight enough to do what we want to do. One of the advantages of newspaper, as opposed to say using mod rock or plaster bandage, is you don't get the grid marks that you get often um, with plaster bandage. using a little water spray here that we used when we're ballasting uh, just as a way again of uh, wetting the paper a bit before we put the glue on and a bit of masking tape to hold it in place on the back. paper mache on. Something different we tried, last time we covered the hill in liquid plaster and it works okay but it's not something easy to get hold of, you've got to get it from craft shops. So I tried something else I'd seen uh, actually from a school teacher and we smeared all this with PVA glue, big coat of PVA glue. Now that's dried, you can hear how hard it is. So we're not going to do the plaster and that way we're not going to have any more expense. So uh, ordinary acrylic paint, this has come from Poundland as always, I really ought to call our railway Poundland model railway. Um, and all we're going to do is we're going to paint this green and there's, the reason we're painting this green is very simple. When you put the scatter on, if you miss any, and you always do, or if a little bit falls off, it won't matter. One of the first ones we did with the plaster showed through and we got away with it because it looked like chalk. Um, but it's much better actually to do this and then when you put whatever scatter on you put it hides it. Now I'm going to do the same as always I, I don't think you need too much help being shown how to use a paintbrush so I'm going to stop talking now and we'll time lapse this and I don't know we might put some nice music or something on. So I'm going to carry on with this it's going to take me about 20 minutes and about 30 seconds on there. Now I could go and make a cup of tea. You could, go on then. That's that stage finished, all ready now for hills and scatter. So we left it last time with the green painted. Now what I want to do is to build the rock face edge to give it a slightly different look. You will have seen some videos on this before, but just in case you haven't, we're gonna show you again. So what we use is this all-purpose filler. This came from Poundland, as always. I've always joked we ought to call it Poundland Railways. I'm just gonna uh, undo it, because I think it's a new plug. There we go. So it looks like this inside, it's uh, semi-solid, you don't need lots of different tools, uh, it's a knife out of the kitchen and a spoon, and we're just here, all I want to do is put a rock face on the front, I don't want it to come out too much, because there isn't the track 
clearance for the coaches. And what we're going to do is going to put it on and then we'll roughen it up so that it looks a bit more like a rock face. I've got a couple of tools here to do this. So I've got this. I've got a bit of Lego rock face. I'm just going to try pushing that in in a few places. What we're trying to get here is edges because if we can get edges then when we do the dry brush technique it will look more like rock. I'm just going to try and dab it down a bit so that we don't have too much of an unrealistic sticking off edge. I think that's coming along quite nicely. Now what we're going to do is the usual, I'm going to film this, do all this but we'll film it and put it in a time lapse for you so that you can get the idea. It's just tricky trying to get it to stick sometimes to what you're doing it to. But anyway, we'll crack on and um, time lapse it so that you don't have to sit and watch us do this for half an hour. Initiate time lapse! So here we have the filler that's now all dry. So very simple. Uh, this is just uh, tester pots. This happens to be um, wicks. It's the same colour as I used on the rock face on my river, so that it, the rock will all look the same. And um, obviously, what we're just going to do is paint it. You will need to put two coats on because, however hard you try, you miss bits. Uh, and I'm going to stop talking now because we'll go into the usual time lapse. So what we're doing here, we've let the base coat dry. This is just a uh, a black watery paint simple as that um, and you can see what we're trying to do is put it on really thickly so that it goes in all the creases and crevices like that it has to be really quite black don't worry if it um, looks like it's too black it seldom is doesn't matter if it runs like that and we're just going to sit and work it into all the cracks and crannies. You can see hopefully how well that's working when you look at a bit that's been done and a bit that hasn't been done. And then what we'll do after this is we'll, we'll do a dry brush technique, but this really needs to dry for at least 24 hours. Uh, it's very watery paint. If it's not absolutely dry, the dry brushing won't work and it looks a complete mess. Um, doesn't give you the desired effect at all. There we go, nice and quick and easy this. Now what I've done is I've painted some of the rock colour a little bit up what was going to be grass, just to give me a better transition uh, when the time comes. I'm not going to time lapse this bit because um, it doesn't take very long to do, so we've just done that bit as you can see in real time and there we go so we come to the last stage of doing the rock face what's known as dry brushing which you read a lot about but you don't always get shown how to do it you need a much lighter color than your base color but in the same spectrum although i always just use this which is cream and it literally means having almost no paint on the brush and then brushing over like that and what you'll see is, I'll bring it up to the camera, so I need my glasses these days. If I bring it up to the camera, what you're doing is, the dark is the depth and the light is um, the lighter bit. And that's too much, because I was talking and not listening. So, but we can, oh, it's not working, because I bodged it. So we'll come back and we'll fix that in a minute. It's because I wasn't, I was talking and not concentrating and I've put that on. 
but we can paint over that and then that will be done. In fact, when you do it properly, you can see the difference. Um, it makes a big difference to the rock. And you just force it in. And what I've got here is a very stiff, short bristled brush, and that's ideal. In fact, I know how we can hide that bit. We'll put some grass on it. And it really is that simple. We don't want it too much there. And that's why you need to, quite, to use quite a dark base color and a lot of black paint because this will lighten it. And what I will do, just quickly show you the finished result, which is actually quite a nice realistic rock face. And then to scatter. Camera. So now to the next part. Um, I could use all sorts of scatter to do this. Uh, so we could use the static grass technique, but I picked this up the other day for 50p. Uh, and so it's quite a nice color. So we're going to use that. Also, because then I have three different colors of grass on the layout, which is more realistic. This really isn't complicated, especially as we've done quite a lot of green paint. I'm going to use this cheap PVA because it's already quite watery, which is another advantage of it. And all we're going to do, we're going to work it down towards the rock face, make sure it's covered as much as possible. Um, we might time frame this bit. Time lapse. time lapse this bit because this is a bit um, boring. You get the message, we'll time lapse this um, and then you can take it from there. So what we're going to do, put some scatter into our tea strainer. and put it all over our layout. Now what we're going to do, we're just going to tip this a little bit because... Your arm's going to be in the way. Well, can you come and be a cameraman for a minute? Mm-hmm, hang on. Just pop yourself down for a second, buddy. You've got permission to walk around. So what I'm just showing here really is that this was a 50p bag and we've done all that hillside and we've still got, I don't know, two thirds of a bag left. Um, obviously you can you can buy it, buy it new because I'm not fussed about the colour, I just buy it cheap whenever I can get it, eBay or second hand shops. But that's a particularly nice one because it's multicoloured so I'm pleased with that. So, there we have a hill, all made for just a few pounds, a couple of pounds literally. So here it is on the layout. Um, you can see that what I've done is just taken the ballast up to the edge of it to blend it in. I put some trees on, these are the usual ones we get from China for about 20p each. And when I can find it, I've got my pillbox to stick on. So hopefully, nice, simple, cheap, quick, effective way of making hills. As always, like, comment, subscribe, subscribe to our newsletter and thanks for watching. Hi, thanks for watching the video and for the nice comments. Uh, click on the left for a previous video in this series. Click on the right for another video you might enjoy. And please don't forget to click to subscribe, like, comment, etc. Thanks again.